Not necessarily in the same vein, because it does deal with education. Representative Pilath, we, you're next in order. Would uh, Indiana be better served without a federal department of education? You know, I've been hearing about this issue for a long time. I don't know why. There's in, in some um, political sectors of the the voting collective conscience. There's been this objection to a U.S. Department of Education thinking that somehow it's a, it's a um, vestige of a new world order of some kind, um, that uh, it means that, that kids are going to be indoctrinated with some sort of strange left-wing agenda that they can't ever get out of their heads or they'll never be able to think for themselves. Um, look, it's like anything else we do in this country. People want cooperation in education. They want cooperation a lot more than they want competition. And that means that it's to have ideas that come um, from our nation as a whole that can be applied at the state level, to have good ideas from the state that can be used by everyone in the country. Um, th those, are, those are good things. Uh, there isn't much more important than the human resources in our nation, and that's the, the crop of kids that we're growing, the crop of bright minds that we're growing. Um, it's a, it, it, there's no more important national resource. So the idea that we're going to do away with the Department of Education, um, or there's going to be no, it, it, sometimes leadership comes from the state, sometimes leadership comes from the nation, but uh, the idea that there's never going to be federal leadership on education that's not even desirable to even consider, uh, that's sort of a, a, a silly notion that I think most people wouldn't agree with. And. Uh, I'm certain that most of the people in here wouldn't agree with it. President Mosley? Could you repeat that question? Um, would we be better served if the Department of Education, that's the federal, uh, Okay, thank you. I'm pretty sure. I, that's, what I, that's what I thought the question was. Because I'm sitting here and I'm thinking to myself, as I thought in the past, on this issue, is, is the question is always asked, would we be better served by? Uh, I think the question is, who would be better served if and for? And that question should be, would parents be better served? Would kids be better served? Would uh, business owners be better served? Who's going to be better served rather than be served by? Who's it for? Who has an advantage? Who? Who is better off with this change than leaving it the way it is? And I would suggest that my experience, just as a taxpaying citizen is, whenever you see major wholesale change occur, such as this suggests, how often do you feel that you ended up better off than you were before? What, what happens down the road that makes your life better than it was before? What happens down the road that gives that child a better education than they're receiving today? So, is the question about money? Is the question about a distasteful opinion of the federal government? Or is the question about how do we, does this create a better product that comes out of our public school system? Um, I think that needs to be the way the question is formed rather than are we better off in a wholesale fashion with or without what we've come to use in the past. How are we going to make it better in the future by just simply the stroke of a pen saying it's no longer there. It's a big change. We need to think it through. Um, Senator Charbonneau, did you want to comment? Yeah, I wasn't going to, but uh, just real quickly, I, I think the question maybe go is, is much bigger than, than education um, in the uh, Federal Department of Education. It, it, it's all about states' rights versus um, the, the U.S., uh, the federal government, and uh, a pretty fundamental 
principle in, in our country uh, mm -hmm. from, from the day that the, the country was formed. Uh, you know, the, the federal government has certain rights that have been given to the federal government by the states. And anything that has not been uh, so given by the, the states uh, maintain, uh, remains with the, the, the individual states. Um, <coughs> yeah, that's enough. Um, Representative Salve. Um, a little known secret, uh, in my youth, I flew a guy named Birch By around, uh, probably a black mark on the Republican <coughs> background. And I remember being in Richmond, Indiana with him and a similar question came up and he said, government is like a vacuum. When the locals don't do something, the state is sucked into it. When the state doesn't do something, the federal government fills the vacuum. Now, if there are things we don't like, uh, quite frankly, nobody to the right of me is going to want to hear this. But most of the legislation that was passed, except the collective bargaining piece on education, was an Arne Duncan agenda. So the issue is working with our congressmen and saying, hey, wait a minute. Here are the issues where we are culturally unique, and let us handle those at the local level or the state level. Now, quite frankly, I'm kind of in the middle on all of this, but the bottom line is that if we can get folks at the local level to aggressively pursue the right things, it's easier to make an argument for the state to stay out of it. But when there is a vacuum, the next level of government by its nature fills that vacuum. So uh, it doesn't sound like much of an answer, but I will tell you, eliminating the federal uh, Department of Education would be a struggle. And quite frankly, we compete in a world market. Our kids are competing against kids all over the world, and we can argue what testing methods they use and all those things. But when it comes to earning a living, we're competing in a world market. You know, I'm, I'm on the advisory board, separate from my political uh, life at MIT. The number of engineers at MIT that leave America in aeronautics, which happens to be my field, is huge. So we've got to compete in that world. Now, do we do that by federal standards? I don't know. But somewhere it's all got to come to com together so our nation can stay economically viable. Uh, I don't think any of us knows what the right balance is. The secret is, is to make sure we're aggressively pursuing good education policy at the lowest possible level so that vacuum principle doesn't kick in. I think we started with Representative Pilas with Senator Italian. I agree with Birch Bay. <laughs> um, the next uh, question begins with Representative Mosley, and this is it. It's it's uncompatible.